let's think about what a cycle is. So we've learned several cycles already. This picture here is a picture of the seasonal cycle. Tell me more about this. What cycle is this? Tell me more about this cycle. What cycle is this? Tell me more about this cycle. This is the life cycle of a chicken. Tell me about this life cycle. This is the life cycle of a frog. Tell me about this life cycle. Here's the life cycle of a butterfly. Please describe this for me. What comes to mind when you hear the word water? Where can you find it? What other living things need water besides people? Why did ancient civilizations develop around water? So all things on earth can be described as being solid, liquid, or gas. If something is a solid, it keeps its shape. So if you pick up a book and hand it to someone else, it will still keep its same shape. It keeps its shape because the book is a solid. If something is a liquid, it can be poured. It doesn't keep its shape, but takes on the shape of the container. So water is a liquid because it takes the shape of whatever container it is in. If something is a gas, it's often hard to see. So the air all around us is a gas. It's not solid because it, because it does not keep its shape, and it is not liquid because it cannot be poured. Heat can change things from solids to liquids to gases. So an ice cube is the solid form of water. When heated, an ice cube can melt and become water. When we boil water, it heats up and becomes water vapor, which is a gas. So the water on Earth goes through a cycle as well, and this is called the water cycle. I want you to listen carefully to learn about the main topic of the read aloud, the water cycle, and find out how important the water cycle is to our planet. Every day all around you an extraordinary natural cycle is happening. It's called the water cycle. Most of the water that has ever existed on our planet is still here and is being moved from one place to another. It moves from the oceans and land to the sky above us, and it moves from one part of the world to another. It has done this for millions and millions of years. The rain that falls on you has been recycled many, many times over many millions of years. Water is the main source of life. More than two-thirds of Earth's surface is covered with water. That's a good thing, because all living things need water to survive. Approximately 97% of the water on Earth is in the oceans. That means most of Earth's water is found in the oceans. The rest is in lakes, rivers, streams, ponds, beneath the ground, or in its frozen state in the form of glaciers and polar ice. There's also water that you cannot see in the air around you called water vapor. Therefore, water not only moves from place to place, but it can exist in three states of matter. It can be a liquid, a solid, and a gas. Oceans and rivers contain water in liquid form. Glaciers and the ice you put in drinks contain water in frozen, solid form and the air contains water as a gas called water vapor. The water cycle has three main phases, evaporation, condensation, and precipitation. Water changes its form based on the temperature and whether it's being heated or cooled. In the winter when it's cold, many people experience days in which snow falls from the sky. The snow covers the land and icicles hang down from the roofs of houses. But then as spring arrives and the weather becomes warmer, the snow and ice melt into puddles. The puddles slowly disappear as the warm sunshine causes the water to evaporate. Through the process of evaporation, the warmth of the sun changes liquid water into a gas known as water vapor. Water vapor is carried up into the air. The hotter it is, the more quickly evaporation happens. This also happens when you boil water. It can evaporate. Now let's follow that water vapor as it rises up, higher and higher into the sky. 
As it rises up, it is blown about by the wind and it moves through the air or atmosphere. In other words, water vapor may be carried by the wind far away from the place where it was once a puddle. Water vapor in the air far below the clouds is called humidity. When there's a lot of water in the air, we say it is humid. At different times of the year, there are different amounts of water in the air. Warm air can hold more water vapor than cold air. That's why on a hot summer's day, if there's a lot of moisture in the air, you'll often hear people talk about the humidity. Water vapor high in the atmosphere forms clouds as it becomes water droplets. The wind carries the water vapor higher and higher into the atmosphere where the temperatures are much cooler. As the vapor cools, it changes back from a gas into water droplets, which form clouds. When water changes from a gas into a liquid, this process is called condensation. Because cold air cannot hold as much water vapor as hot air, condensation happens high up in the sky or atmosphere. Condensation causes clouds to form. In other words, water vapor becomes water droplets. As the tiny water droplets are blown about by the wind, they crash into each other. They join together to form larger water droplets. As this bumping and crashing of water droplets continues, clouds are formed. Eventually, when water droplets and clouds become too large and too heavy, they fall back down to the ground. So the darker the cloud, the more rain or snow will probably fall. Depending on the temperature high up in the atmosphere, the water droplets either fall as rain, sleet, snow, or hail. When water droplets fall to the ground, regardless of what they look like, this is called precipitation. So down comes the rain or snow or hail or sleet. It waters the earth and falls into the oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, and ponds. Some of the precipitation seeps into the ground, too. This groundwater nourishes plants. It also provides a source of fresh drinking water. Many people have wells that access the underground water supply. How do you think people get the water that is stored under the ground? Once precipitation occurs, the process starts all over again. Water on Earth evaporates and rises up into the atmosphere as water vapor. As it cools or condenses, clouds form once again. Clouds are much more than fun shapes in the sky. Without clouds, there would be no precipitation, such as snow, sleet, hail, or rain. Without precipitation, nothing could live or grow on Earth. Clouds also provide a kind of shelter or protection from the sun. Without clouds, it would be very, very hot during the day and extremely cold at night. This would make it difficult for living things to survive. Clouds help control the temperature on our planet. Scientists group clouds according to their shape and height in the sky. Cirrus clouds form at very high altitudes in the atmosphere. The word cirrus means curl of hair in Latin. Can you see why cirrus clouds have this name? They are wispy, almost feather-like in appearance and are usually a good sign of good weather. These clouds can be up to four miles above the ground. The temperature is very cold that high up in the atmosphere, and so cirrus clouds are made largely of ice crystals. Cumulus clouds gather in the sky on nice sunny days. The word cumulus means heap in Latin. Can you see why cumulus clouds have this name? Cumulus clouds appear lower down in the sky, although they are still about two miles above the ground. Cumulus clouds are round and fluffy looking. Some people think they look like cotton. They're a sign that the weather is going to get colder. However, when cumulus clouds get larger and darker, this can mean that there will be a thunderstorm. The appearance of stratus clouds means that you will probably need an umbrella because it is going to rain. The word stratus means layer in Latin. Can you see why stratus clouds have this name? These are usually gray and they can cover the whole sky and block the sun. Stratus clouds form lower, lower down in the atmosphere. The temperature affects whether the clouds contain ice crystals or water droplets. The clouds that are high up in the colder reaches of Earth's atmosphere are made up of sparkling ice crystals. The clouds that are lower down where it is warmer are made up of tiny water droplets. The next time you look up at the clouds, think about the amazing water cycle. What is the main topic of today's read aloud? Is the earth covered mostly by land or by water? 
What do we call the process when water from oceans, rivers, and puddles changes to a gas and moves into the air? What causes evaporation? Can we usually see evaporation or water vapor? What do we call the process when water vapor turns back into a liquid or water droplets because of cooling? Water can be a solid, a liquid, or a gas. What do we call water when it is gas? Why are the processes of evaporation, condensation, and precipitation considered a cycle? What is the name of this cycle? How do clouds fit into the water cycle? Does the earth make new water or does the same water go through the water cycle again and again? In the read aloud you heard, when water droplets fall to the ground, regardless of what they look like, this is called precipitation. Say precipitation with me. Precipitation. Precipitation is water that falls from the sky in the form of rain, snow, sleet, or hail. The farmer had to water his garden because there had been no precipitation for a month. What is your favorite or least favorite kind of precipitation? What's the word we've been talking about? Precipitation.